ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ I. Now I got a roll with ice. Cold, these brothers, my guys. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ I. Now I got a roll with ice. Ride or die. 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 Cold, these brothers, my guys. Know that they fly. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ I. Now I got a ride or die. This is Jared, and I'm back. Hey, guys, man, I am so excited to do this show tonight. All right, you all know what time it is, all right? This whole month, all right, this whole month, we are celebrating, bringing more awareness for lupus. All right, you all know what time it is, so I'm going to show it here again. All right, here we go. May is Lupus Awareness Month, all right, so... I'm looking for warriors who, lupus warriors, who want to tell their story. Tonight, I found one. All right. I was looking through Facebook groups, found this, this warrior who has just a, a smile that's infectious. All right. And I, I invited her to come on, and I'm excited to have her tell her story. All right. You probably have heard, maybe you've interacted with her before because she's, She's interactive in a lot of these Facebook groups, but this is May Lupus Awareness Month, and we've got a lupus warrior on the show tonight, all right? I'm excited to bring her on, but please don't be stingy, all right? Don't be stingy, all right? Hey, thanks for watching, Candy. Thanks for watching, Steve, watching and sharing. Thanks for sharing. All right. So much like what Steve is doing, I'm going to need your help and please don't be stingy. All right. Share this post. All right. We want to bring more awareness to lupus. Many lupus warriors, uh, their kidneys are affected. And so they go into kidney failure. And so we're going to talk about her journey though, but please. All right. Everybody wants a slice of the pie. Please share this. All right. Let's not be stingy. Don't be that person who takes takes the whole pie and doesn't share, okay? All right, so I'm going to bring on our warrior. I'm going to bring her on, and we're going to get her story, all right? I think she, I, I, if I understood it well, I think she's from St. Louis, Missouri, all right? So we've got somebody from St. Louis, Missouri. We're going to bring her on now, all right? We've got Kendra B., all right, Kendra B. All right, I'm going to bring her on now, and you guys know what we do. All right, we give her a very VIP welcome. All right, and when I play this VIP intro, all right, I'm going to, where's my microphone? I'm going to ask you to please, please put in the comment section, all right, welcome Kendra, or welcome Kendra B, or welcome, uh, KB, you know, welcome her and give her a very special Warriors Quest Show welcome, all right? Here we go, VIP!
Kendra, Kendra, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm I'm well. I'm well. Uh, man, it it's a beautiful day where I'm at in Utah. Um, you know, 70, 73 degrees, sun is shining, it's looking like spring. How about you? Where's the what's the weather look like there? Um, it's kind of cool. Not too cold though. But I'm from Mississippi, so I'm used to heat. All and, right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got, um, thank you for watching. Uh, she's saying, she, yay, she's from Mississippi. So there we go. Someone's a, is a friend or a relative that's watching? Um, I'm, I don't know. I can't see. I don't have my glasses. All right. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> at the YouTube, uh, the, her YouTube handle is Knickknack. So I don't know. Oh, I don't you know. know. Yeah. Know. She'll probably, um, hopefully she'll tell us what her, what his or her name is. Yeah. All right. So, uh Candy's watching. Candy, thank you. She's saying welcome. Uh, Candy, oh my gosh, thanks for watching, Candy. Uh, Kendra, I don't know if if you've interacted with Candy before, but she is awesome. Um, yeah. Candy is a kidney transplant recipient, and I hope I get this right, Candy. And then her we have daughter. That in common. Yeah, exactly. You have that in common. Mm -hmm. uh, her daughter is a kidney donor, and then her husband. Her husband is currently on dialysis with oh, kidney failure. Wow. Yeah, so you know they've got they've got um, you know in their family it's it's all connected that way. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, thanks for watching, Thomas Chapman. Hey, Pooty. All right, so. <laughs> All right. That, okay, that's the same Kendra B that works uh, in dialysis. He's asking. Yes. All right. Me. There we go. <laughs> so, I'm. Uh, we got. Uh, I love the comments. So please, uh, just make the comment section just be lit. Okay, make it go on fire with comments. But, yeah. All right. I love this. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you solo, and I'm gonna have you introduce yourself. Um, tell us what your your hero's origin story is, okay? Even right. you know one of my um, shows I watch on the on the CW now is Batwoman, and even she has an origin story. Right. You know, right. yeah. I mean, uh, I love it that she's uh, African American right now, Batwoman. You know, and mm -hmm. but uh, let, let's have you introduce yourself. So um, you live in St. Louis now, but you're from Mississippi. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna let you tell. I'm gonna put you solo, but we can still talk, okay? Okay. So uh, my name is Kendra. Um, I'm from Mississippi. I now live in Missouri. I suffer. Well, I'm not gonna say suffer. I battle lupus on a daily basis. Um, I've battled lupus since age, probably age six, but I was diagnosed at age twelve. Um, I received a kidney transplant in 2016. And I was a part of an, yeah, I was a part of an eight people kidney swap. So my mom was a donor. Um, I did not get her kidney though, but I received the kidney. Um, I now work in dialysis and I love it. Nice. Um, um, yeah, so I just, I'm just out here living like, like it's golden, you know? All I right, try to, all right. <laughs> I try to do my best to smile always and keep smiles on other faces. I love, love it. to laugh. Uh huh. Um, I like to shop. I like to eat. I love to eat. Let me change that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> especially since I'm not on any, on any renal diets anymore. I love. Yeah. To eat. All right. Um, yeah. So, oh, I'm a part of a, a lupus sorority. I uh -huh. joined last winter. Um, so I am a part of Lambda Sigma Sigma Lupus Sorority Incorporated. Um, anybody with lupus can join. Um, what else? Um, I just like making people laugh. I'm, just, I'm always smiling, always goofy and laughing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, we're kindred spirits that way. I love it. Yeah. So, so Shell Allen is watching, and she's lupus warrior as well, and she's currently awesome. looking for a kidney donor. Thanks for really? watching, Shell. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so Shell, uh, please continue to comment because I know Shell, you're gonna have. Uh, a lot in common with what maybe she is going to tell us about her journey. So um, I, all this month, I've been trying to learn a little bit more about lupus every week uh, so that 
uh, it's enlightening, um, and it's it, I, I'm I'm uh, I, I'm really inspired by by what you guys battle with because you know I've learned in the two years that I've been interviewing people for who have kidney failure, mm -hmm. and so I'm a lot more versed with that. But yeah. uh, I I'm really encouraged um, by your strength and toughness as lupus warriors because yeah. you when lupus if I'm not mistaken, as, as far as I understand, it's attacking different tissues and organs. Yes. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so there's four different types of lupus. I have the one that's uh, pronounced systemic lupus erythematosus, which um, it can attack many different things. My lupus mainly attacks my joints, my bones, okay. and um, sometimes my skin, not as often as it used to. Mm -hmm. And um, it attacked my kidneys, of course. Um, that was a surprise because I didn't even know lupus could do that, but <laughs> it did. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I've had three hip replacements also. What? Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, wow. Yeah. yeah, lupus is a beast. <laughs> Sister, you're not that old. Three hip replacements? Yeah, I'm. What am I? I just turned 29. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Three hip replacements. Wow. Mm -hmm. See, oh my gosh. I'm I am inspired uh, just by that alone. I mean, I can only imagine having oh, yeah. one, but you've had three. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah. So, yeah, lupus is, and it was the, the hip replacements were, uh, my hips deteriorated because of the medicine I took for my uh -huh. lupus, which is prednisone, steroids. Prednisone, they yeah. basically uh, deteriorated my hip bones and I could not walk anymore. So I wow. had to have hip replacements, yeah. All right, so we've got the we've got the lovely Nashonda Laramore watching. Um, thank you, I'm, 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 I'm in awe and, I, and I'm, I'm very honored that she's watching right now. I, thank you for watching and uh, Hopefully, um, you know, I can make it up to you and watch your show, too. Uh, she's uh, she's awesome. So Jonathan Trailer's watching as well. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, and we've got Steve Belcher says, I remember you sharing that on our show that you did with him. So that's yes, <clears throat> hi, Steve. I did <laughs> do his show before. Okay. <clears throat> Shell, and uh, Shell Allen saying that prednisone destroys your bones. Yes. Um, man, um, Tell me about it. <laughs> but that, you know, when I think about it, that, that makes sense because it, it, it is a, a steroid, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you take too much of that, that, that can, uh, you know, wow. I hadn't even yeah. thought of that because immediately when I think of prednisone, I just think of how it makes your face balloon and you've got yes, the moon face. Yeah. yeah. And I was on it for a long time and I'm, I, I actually still have to take it. Okay. I hate it, but I have to take it for my kidney. So, um, yeah, prednisone is is bad. It's it's good, but it's bad. You know, everything has the goods and the bads, and right. Prednisone is one of those things. Yeah. No All right. So I think she had uh, said before that that's your mom, but she's using uh, Thomas Chapman's YouTube channel. Oh, okay. So uh, I think yeah. that's I think that's your mom. Let me see if she's I can my find. Shiro. Hi, yeah. mom. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it again where it says right here, Kendra's mom. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh. So awesome. Hi, so uh, anyway, then we've uh, we've got some more comments here. Please light up the comment section, okay? Hold. Let me show a, a little uh, a gif here because I, I love the comments coming in, everyone. Please, because the more comments, the the more. Um, the more visible this is going to be with the algorithm, whether it's YouTube or Facebook. Here we go. Right side here. It's on your side. There we go. We're, we're lighting it up. Yeah. We're lighting it up with the comments. So um, <laughs> we've got, uh, you know, here we go. Drop a comment, you know, drop and then it. that's right. Drop it. All right. Drop a comment. So one of the things that I was uh, reading about, I'm going to bring this one up again, um, is that uh, again, I, I wanted to learn a little bit more and I, and I have learned a little bit more each week. And one of the things I learned is that lupus, okay, not only is there a greater percentage of women that get lupus, but African-American, it, it, I read people of color, but I'll, I'll say African-Americans are four times greater. Yeah. As yeah, far as the, the chances. Yeah. To yeah. get lupus. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. And another thing is, um, most of the time, most people that I ran into that have lupus, it's genetic. Well, right. So, yeah, my maternal grandmother actually had lupus, and she was, I believe, 38 when she passed away from lupus. Ooh, that is way and too then, young. Way yeah, too young. yeah. I didn't, I, so I never got to meet her. And then my um, my auntie has lupus also. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of, yeah, I would say mostly, most times it's genetic. That, that's, we, that was kind of how I found out I had lupus. Like they ran tests for years and couldn't find anything. And once they, once my mom, you know, told them, well, my mother had lupus and my sister has lupus. Yeah. Like, oh, maybe she has lupus. Let's test her for lupus. <laughs> oh and so my they ran all these tests. And, you know, it takes a, n a number of tests to actually right. say it's lupus. Because yeah. it, there's no one thing you say, oh, you have lupus. It's like numbers of tests and they ran all the tests and then they said, well, she has lupus. I, I was like suffering from like six years old until they said what? she had lupus and I was 12. Oh yeah. My gosh. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. That, would, that is actually a question that Shell has. Uh, okay. She's asking, what, what age were you diagnosed with lupus? I was diagnosed at age 12. I'm now 29. 12. Right. Mm -hmm. But it, but you were saying you were struggling with, with yeah. different symptoms and yeah. things that were probably caused by lupus, mm -hmm. even since you were six years old. Yeah, I was, I would have lot, a lot of bone pain. And I, uh -huh. I, being a six-year-old, you can't explain what bone pain is. I just said, my, my bones hurt. They hurt yeah. all the time. And she would take me to doctors and they would just say, oh, it's just growing pain. She'll be okay. Just take some Tylenol and go to bed. And <laughs> like, shut her up. She was okay. She's just whining. And like, no, my bones hurt, mom. So she, uh, um, my doctor finally suggested, I, my pediatrician finally suggested I go to a rheumatologist. And she, okay. you know, I went back and forth, back and forth. And she finally said, I think she has, first they were like juvenile arthritis, I think. And then they were All like, right. I think she has lupus. So that, that was when I found out at 12. And of course, I'm like, I don't have lupus. I'm 12 years old. What is lupus? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I don't know that any 12-year-old would I'm naturally like, know what that is. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So I was in denial for some years. And I didn't talk about it or anything. But now I'm like, I'm tired of uh, being in pain. I want a cure. So sure. I'm just going to. I'm gonna scream to the top of my lungs. Uh huh. I have lupus. Help me. Yeah. You know? Uh huh. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So it looks like your mom's asking you to talk about your college struggles. Do you know what she may mean by that? Uh yeah. Being in college and being in pain is no fun. That's um, no fun. I started college about two and a half hours away from home, and um. These um, next we moved out of our dorm rooms and then okay. I believe the semester I was supposed to go back I ended up missing out on the dorm room and I was um I didn't get a dorm room so I ended up having to go back home all right and stay home and like a month after I was home um my hair started falling out I started um get it, being short of breath a lot like it was a lot of different things going on I'm not knowing I'm just like oh I'm getting fat I need to get I mean I'm out of shape I need to lose weight you know I don't know why my hair is falling out I don't, I'm just not even thinking all of these things like what's going on right and okay I woke up one morning and my face was really swollen to the point I didn't even look like myself and I went to my doctor and I found out my kidneys had failed and I was like almost Oh I'm almost gosh. dead, but yeah, I was right there on my deathbed. Wow. So yeah, I started emergency dialysis and yeah, and I and being in college and going to dialysis every other day is not easy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That must have been a tough struggle. That must have been oh, yeah. fair. Yeah, it's an uphill climb, isn't it? Oh yeah, most definitely. <laughs> yes. Oh, I, I don't so. ever want to go back there. <laughs> but yeah, it was rough. So tell and me about uh huh. Go ahead. So, so, in college, you've got to have emergency dialysis, and mm -hmm. so when they started you, um, what? I mean, uh, were they doing just the the catheter in the beginning, and mm -hmm. and how did it progress? Did you ever? Did you do home dialysis after that? Did you go in so, center? Okay, so yeah, I um. I started in. Of course, I started in the hospital. I was in the hospital like a month, I believe excuse me, because I was just, um, so my body had so much poison in it, I 
had to get it all out basically. And then um, from there, I went to in center and I was in, in the clinic until I moved to Missouri. I was in the clinic in Mississippi until I moved to Missouri. As soon as I got to Missouri, they're like, hey, you want to do home dialysis? I'm like, yeah, started at home. I started at home in December 2015. Okay. And April 2016, well, February 2016, they called my mom and told her she was able to give give her kidney and that I was able to get a kidney. So April 2016, I got my kidney. Two days after my birthday, actually. So, wow. Yeah, best birthday <laughs> present ever. I bet. Yeah, that is <laughs> yeah. a great birthday present. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. That makes it very memorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I celebrate all April. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so K Candy's asking, is there a particular look? Uh, is there a particular looking for a kidney lupus charity? Uh, PME later about your sororities to work with the UPMC Starzel Transplant Center to work with our center. So maybe you can get connected with her okay. uh, about sure. that. Sure. Um, Kendra has a beautiful spirit, keeps the staff and patients laughing throughout the day. So <laughs> it sounds like maybe she, um, Nick Nack, um, works with you at dialysis then. Okay. Um, That's what it sounds oh, like. Yeah, yeah. I think I know who that is now. All okay. right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, Steve's asking, this is a pretty good question. Um, since your transplant has lupus affected your transplanted kidney in any way? Oh, yeah. I've had many um, scares over the past couple of years with um, just different infections. And of course, anytime I get an infection, it's trying to attack my kidney because it's like, you're not supposed to be here. Right. right yeah. here. So it's the first thing it goes for is my kidney. And then I have to go to the hospital and get all these uh, ant antibiotics and, you know, everything is just, it always goes straight to my kidney. So yes, I have had a few scares in the past with um, thinking it was basically almost in rejection, but thank thankful for the good doctors we have here in Missouri because I always bounce back and I hope I continue to bounce back. Every exactly. Time. Yeah. I, I never want to go back on dialysis. That's, no. So yeah. So, and that's what's uh, so inspiring for me, uh, Kendra, is that, uh, and many kidney warriors struggle with different things, mm -hmm. okay, when they're on dialysis, like mm -hmm. uh, you have lupus and then you had kidney failure. And, mm -hmm. and uh, there are also many different things that people struggle with and not just lupus. You probably have some other things besides lupus, but yeah. the thing it, it, that is so inspiring to me, honestly, and the, the more I think about it, it's just it amazes me is that you were on kidney, you had kidney failure, you were on dialysis and you had lupus at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we're, I mean, talk about lupus gives you fatigue anyway. Oh, right. Yeah. And then, and then bring on kidney failure where you've got toxins that aren't being filtered out. Well, mm -hmm. you may have that fatigue from kidney failure too. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. that's gotta be, um, it double was really hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was really hard trying to even stay in, go awake in college classes. Um, friends wanting to go out to eat, and I'm at the table like, uh huh, where are we? <laughs> like, it was, it's hard. Yeah, it's still hard now because of the lupus fatigue. And I try to just push through it. Like, I do my best to push through, but when I'm tired, I'm tired, and I, I just want to sleep. So yeah, it is really hard. But um, you know. And you don't, I feel like if I was to not work and just sit around and sleep all day like I want to, right? then I probably, I wouldn't go anywhere in life. I'd just be a sleeper. <laughs> you all know, right. I just sleep all the time. So I have to push myself to get up and go to work and um, try to make the best out of every day. Well, I I, I seriously love your, your attitude, uh, your... Yeah. You know, your go getter and uh, your smile just uh, lights up the room. I can imagine. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so we've got, uh, you know, Nick Nack, uh, who you um, somehow probably work with with her hints from her comments, is asking, What were your symptoms? So, when I'm not sure if she's asking, like, when you were six years old or 12 years old, or, you know, what that were that what she means necessarily or she means by that statement, but, mm -hmm. um, 
so what are your what are your what do you go through typically with lupus because i know it's different for each person now you yeah. talked about the fatigue you know and that's real uh, what about things like fogginess of memory hair loss um yeah. the butterfly rash and other things like that can you talk yeah. about it some of the things like that yeah so um I, I haven't had the butterfly rush in probably two years. Okay. Um, it ha it does come, and when it comes, you will know. It's really <laughs> red rash here, and of course, uh -huh. it's like cherry red. So really, you can see it. That's yeah. Um, I actually had a picture once, and it's it's almost like a um, raised bump instead of like flat on my skin. So it's kind of like a oh, almost it's like a, a bruise, like somebody punched me. But, you know, okay. So it's um, like, so yeah. it's raised from the skin then. Mm -hmm. Mine is, yeah. Everyone uh -huh. is different. But yeah. mine is usually raised right here uh -huh. in the shape of a butterfly wing. It's raised and almost like a purplish red. Um, so yes, I have had the butterfly rash numerous times. Um, like I said, fatigue, my jo joints ache a lot, especially when it's raining. Um, when I overwork myself, when I if I work like three or more days in a row, I'm like drained to the point where I want to sleep the next two days. You're um, wiped out. Yeah. So, yeah. And I um, try not to work three, three or more days in a row, but you know, it happens. And when it does, yeah. I already know my fourth day is going to be in the bed all day. Um, you count I, on um, it. Yeah. I have, I have my thing right now is trying to control my joint pain a lot. So I just started um, this new medicine called Benlista. Mm -hmm. um, it's a self injection. Um, and my doctor um, prescribed it to me about two months ago. So it's working, but I mean, I have my days still, especially when it's raining or super cold outside. I ache a lot. I ache on a daily basis, like every single day I'm aching. But I just, like I said, I push through and I just try not to think about it. As long as I don't think about it, I'm fine. As soon as I sit down and focus on the pain, I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to go home and crawl under the bed and never wake up, you know. All right. Um, I yeah, hear you. It's, it's hard. And I did have um, problems with my hair falling out, um, but that was when my kidneys failed. So okay. the lupus uh, affected, when it affected my kidneys, it affected my it's hair. Affected as your well. hair, huh? Yeah. I lost majority of my hair um, and it's still growing. It, it did, it's not growing the same way it was before. It's like baby fine. Uh huh. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it affected a lot. It affected my skin. Um, just rashes sometimes i have random rashes or um so even i even have um i think my doctor called them like false fevers where i feel like i have a fever i have chills mm -hmm. and i'm cold and i'm sweating and i'm hot and cold and he told me that was um considered a false fever because i can take my temperature wow. anytime, but i mm -hmm. also but feel yeah wow i feel sick yeah and that's mostly when i like i say i overwork or it's colder it's too cold or um it's raining outside like if my bones ache really bad i have like the false fevers or i don't know the scientific name but you know yeah but your body's telling you like you have a fever but when mm -hmm. you take your temperature you don't have one yeah it's like wow. it basically telling me to sit my butt down and rest yeah you are <laughs> you are tired and you need to go to sleep. yeah yeah it's so that's giving you yeah. strong hints okay mm -hmm. yeah no, something you said kendra um I, I i really like but i want to talk about that is that you said that if is if you think about it then it can affect you more mm -hmm. um yeah. so tell me a little bit about how you can how you help yourself with positive thoughts or positive vibes so that maybe you don't dwell on those things yeah so the things I love to do, I love to color. I, I have adult coloring books. I like to All color. Right. I love uh, crime shows. So I'll sit in front Okay, of what kind of crime first, shows? The first 48, uh -huh. anything that comes on an investigation discovery. Any, like I'm obsessed with crime shows. So if I uh -huh. put on a good crime show and I get into it, I, yeah. I just focus on my pain. Um, another, I love to shop. If somebody says I could be in 
a hundred percent thing, but somebody says, let's go shopping. I'm going to hop up and go shopping. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just, you know, I, I deal with it yeah. in different ways, even though I, I can, like, I can be in, like I said, a hundred percent total all over body pain. But <laughs> if I don't think about it, like if someone walks in the room and says, I, I got some money, let me want to go shopping. I'm like, oh, yeah. sure, let's go. Even let's though I'm it. in pain. But <laughs> yeah. instead of me just sitting in the bed and dwelling on the pain, uh -huh. I'm going to, refocus my mind on something else basically all right all right me from you know sitting here crying and wishing yeah i, I hate lupus i don't like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so. and having a pity party is what you mean right yeah exactly okay yeah. well you know I, I i i love positivity i love optimism and uh, i know that it may not always be easy and that's what sometimes okay what people um they think it comes it, it is a it is a quality that people have. I, I will say that, but yeah. it's not easy. Um, no, you know, no. it's not like I, people see it. I smile a lot. I joke around a lot. I've got, you know, a personality where I like to keep it light. Um, and, and people think that bec because of the smile that maybe, you know, that I might not have a bad day or something. Mm -hmm. And so I think, has that ever been, conceive um misperceived by others because of your smile and the way you look Most definitely because i also suffer from depression and i have anxiety bad um i when i have my bad days i have my bad days um i try not to like take my um depression to work with me i kind of okay. tell myself before i go into work we're going to leave this these tears in the car we're going to go in with our big girl panties on uh -huh. put on a brave face and you know smile so i try my best you know we i have my days everyone has their days. sure right but you're entitled to them i always try my best to go into work and i try to give my patients um something i had you know i would have my certain texts and nurses that would make me laugh and make me smile and okay. just make my day because dialysis is no fun so right. i try to go in and make them smile when they smile it makes me happy so i'm like you know maybe it's not it's not such a terrible day maybe i can you know um because and then i i used to go to counseling and i remember my counselor always told me if i'm in the middle of crying and something is like bothering me she said she said, I always ask myself, but are you dead? <laughs> so I'm, like, I'm like, oh, I just stubbed my toe on the dresser. And then I'm like, and I'm boohoo crying. And I'm like, but am I dead? I'm not dead, so I'm okay. So yeah. maybe I could just put on a smile and get through it, you know? So right. I'm trying my best to just, you know, keep, keep a smile and just do whatever. And my mom can tell you, like, I'm a big cry baby. But, <laughs> you, but I try my best. It's not a bad thing. And I'm it's not getting a bad better. Thing. I know I'm getting so much better, so I'm proud of myself because yeah, it it has been a rough road with lupus and kidney failure and transplant. Transplant is even hard. Um, and yeah, people think a, you know, you know, yeah, they think it's a cure all and you're fixed for life. That is a, that is a common mis mm -hmm. misconception. It really is that if you get a transplanted kidney, that you're golden, but. It, yeah. it's not going to last you forever. It could yeah. go into rejection. And then yeah. you still have other things that are, are, you know, that you have to be concerned about health wise, mm -hmm. like lupus mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then you've got the depression and anxiety. This is not a walk in the park for anybody. Not, oh, no, and, not at all. and so kudos to you. Seriously. I want to give you props for keeping the smile um, you know, and, and trying to make the best out of what is a journey. It is a journey, you know, and you've got, you've got some gloves on, you know, uh, every single day you're battling, you yeah, know? Yeah, most definitely. So Shell Allen's asking a question here. She's, she's, uh, asking, do you have any other autoimmune diseases besides lupus as I do? Usually you have more once you are diagnosed. So have they ever talked about anything else besides lupus that are autoimmune disease related? I did have a doctor tell me that I have fibromyalgia. And okay. that was because I, um, they were, they kept giving me different medicines to kind of um, suppress my lupus and the medicines never really worked. I would go back and like, I took this for three months. I didn't see any changes. 
it's still, you know, I'm still in pain. And they're, 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 they would tell me, well, maybe it's not the lupus. Maybe it's the fibromyalgia. And I'm like, well, oh, I right. just say I have fibromyalgia <laughs> without, you know, saying, um, even asking me, like, do you have this pain? Do you have this symptom? But then I went to one doctor. He said, yes, you have fibromyalgia. I went to another doctor. He's like, no, you don't have fibromyalgia. So I don't know. But I just, <laughs> well, I just, you know, if someone asked me, like, you know, has anybody ever diagnosed me with anything else? I'll say, well, they told me I have speculated. Problems, yeah. But I don't know. I right. Guess. <laughs> yeah. You know, God, God, God bless doctors because, you know, right. they, pra they practice every day, mm -hmm. you know, eight plus years, you know, uh, going to school to actually mm -hmm. become a doctor, uh, you know, with everything, their residency and everything, and they still yeah. practice every day. And I get it. All right. It's, it's, it's not, um, there are gray areas, variables, so and so I can yeah. only imagine how tough it is. But yeah. with that, with that having been said, man, it must be a little discouraging when they're almost speculating, and it's your life, you know, it's your health, and yeah. and and you're supposed to have confidence in them. But if yeah. they're not, sh if they're not sure, it's like, well, <laughs> who right. do I go I'm to? I'm not sure either. Right? Yeah, you know, I don't know. I just tell people, well, I just chalk up everything to lupus. If I just break down crying right here, I'm like, it's lupus. I don't know why I'm crying. You know, I right. just chalk up everything that happens to lupus, yeah. which I feel like lupus has so many different symptoms and it's so widespread. It's, yeah, big spectrum. It, it could be lupus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So she's uh, she has a question here that what helps you go on or push through? You've We've talked a little bit about some of those things. But um, what about like music or movies? You talked about TV shows. So what are some music and maybe movies, uh, you know, things like that, that were maybe your go-tos as far as to get a smile on your face? Uh, is yeah. it, uh, you know, any of the Friday movies or, you know, or, or what? <laughs> so I'm not a movie person because All right. I literally cannot stay awake that long. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will go to sleep in the first 15 minutes of a movie. All right. Um, so I'm not a big movie person. Most people, when they name a movie or they say a line from a movie, I'm like, what's that? I don't, I don't watch movies. <laughs> so um, no to movies, but music, I do love um, 90s R&B. All um, right. At on. work, yes, at work, they play music and I'm singing okay. all day long. And all right. And they're laughing at me because I can't sing. Okay. But what I about sing. like, what about Brian McKnight? Brian McKnight. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. I was on all right. So yeah, I'll sing okay. out at work. Um, I was, I used to sing all the time around the house, and my mom would be like, "Oh my god, you sound terrible." Yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna be on America Idol. <laughs> right. I don't know what you're talking about. All um, right. <laughs> so yeah, music does help me get through. Um, like I said, um, shopping. I love to shop. So like anything that um basically takes my mind off of the now moment that I would yeah. most likely be in, then it's, you know, it's helpful for me. I listen, I do listen to um a lot of music though. Anytime I'm feeling. Music's you know, I like, huge. It is, I like, yeah. yeah, I like some gospel, some Christian gospel um, uh -huh. music. I'm into, um, you know, a little, if you play it, I'll listen to it basically. All right. Well, if I know the words, I'm going to sing it. I can't help myself. So, nice. Yeah. All right. It, it sounds like that really brings you some some energy. Then that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What about Gladys uh, Gladys McKnight? You you like? Do you like any of her music at all? Oh yeah, yes, I do. You yeah. Want to for it? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, do you know? <laughs> do you really know some of that well that you could you could do that? I mean, I'm not going to put I you could, on the spot. But I don't want I don't want anybody to try to record <laughs> me and put me on um all on right. YouTube and then they try to blow up. You know, no. Yeah. I'm do it right now. Maybe next time. <laughs> all right, all right. So, Candy saying, "I believe that Kendra and I will be friends. I hope so too." Um, yeah. So the other thing I wanted to bring up is Margaret. Um, and Margaret, thank you for watching tonight. I really appreciate your support. Um, she's saying that she received a kidney 24 years ago that lupus damaged her kidney, and now oh. she's back on the transplant list. So it sounds like her kidney went into rejection. So. Yeah. And that is one of my biggest fears. Like I said, with anxiety, my anxiety sometimes sure goes through the roof. Even like must be days, real. Yeah. I guess. Oh my gosh, that that is one of my biggest fears right now is to lose my kidney. I've only had it five years, but I just I 
I pray and I ask to just keep this kidney as long as I live because yeah. I just don't, I don't, I think I would go, honestly, I think I would go into a deep depression if something happens to my kidney. Oh, and by the way, my kidney's name is Sydney. Sydney the Sydney. kidney. So, Sydney the kidney. Say, I love that. I don't want to lose That's kidney. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to lose yeah. kidney. So I try my best to like, all right, make sure my medicine is always on time every time even though i don't yeah. take it on time every time i try my best um i can't lose sydney so nice so sydney's kind of a bi-gender name so have do you know if sydney is a, a male or female um my daughter is a male we actually All right. are friends yeah i talk to him okay. pretty often so all right, yeah, very he's, cool he's a male but my kitty is now in me so she's a girl so there we go that's fine yeah because it, yeah. it has its own personality or she has yeah. her own personality yeah, yeah i love she that does, she acts that's, i've never heard that before i don't know why because it, it rhymes so that's awesome sydney the right. kidney that's awesome yeah. yeah so um and she's on the renal diet again uh, or um, she's on the renal diet and that, that's so and shane and shell allen saying that my main problem with lupus was all of the gi symptoms that she had oh, so yeah it's a little bit different yeah lupus has it can affect any part of your body so yes i totally understand i know people with um just have issues with their skin with lupus where they have rashes everywhere yeah. I know people that have um has it's affected their brain their nervous system like it it can attack any part of your body and of course like i said it was my kidney and you know sometimes i'm like man why me but why not me well, you know, I'd, I'd like to think that that God knows us acutely. And, you know, and I because I because I believe that sometimes I ask not necessarily why me, because I, I know that God probably has given me these challenges for a reason. But yeah. it's more like, why do you think I can handle so much mm -hmm. is what I like yeah. to ask, yeah. you know. I, I said that some, me and my coworker were talking the other day and they were they told me, well, he gave it to you because he knew you could handle it. I'm like, he he really did not know that because <laughs> right. I'm struggling. I am struggling right now. Yeah. But, you know, we always make it through, don't we? We always come out on the other side stronger. So Yeah. You know, and so man, um I, I did I just think you're a delight. Um your Thank smile, you. I think everyone else, even Lisa Baxter saying this, that it's uh <laughs> it's contagious you know i think that yeah. yeah so keep smiling you know and uh you know i think that when when you yourself you're a kidney transplant recipient who's mm -hmm. who has lupus you're a lupus warrior mm -hmm. you're inspiring to shell allen who's looking for a kidney uh, margaret yeah and margaret's looking for a kidney and she has She'll lupus so yeah. you know th there are so many people that or watching tonight that you could be an inspiration and yeah. you could inspire them and give them hope yeah how, do, how does definitely. that make you feel I, I feel good i just want to tell them to keep the faith and even like i know we always lose our faith we're like why is my kidney right. not coming fast enough why this why that but just as long as you i feel like as long as you just stay strong and don't don't give up just keep the faith and you will you will get what you need you will get it yeah nice nice uh there's a there's a christian uh r b singer that i that i listen to uh aaron cole and he talks a lot about how um you know god's always on time you mm -hmm. know always yeah, yeah always on time yeah um so we've uh we have uh, some other comments here i want to share um sydney is irish is that for real yeah <laughs> That's, oh, that's your, I think mom. that's your mom again. Yeah, yeah, Sydney is Irish. So my kidney donor is, um, I, I guess, Caucasian and Irish. He uh -huh. said he's, he has some Irish in his blood. So okay. yeah, Sydney is Irish. So now I'm part Irish. All right, and, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I have so many different things inside of me. <laughs> Do you drink dark beer now? Oh, no. <laughs> See, I don't even like, yeah, no, nah, I don't like beer. I like the smell right. of beer. Yeah. <laughs> he drinks enough for me. My kidney donor drinks enough for me. <laughs> there you go right and so shell shell saying and and uh that's kind of like 
um, similar to what I I was saying, like, why do you think I can handle so much? But she's saying, what are you trying to teach me, God? And I like that. Right, that's, a diff- exactly. that's a different yeah. take on it. I love that. Thanks for sharing that, Shell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then praying for you, Margaret. So, you know, we all are praying for you, Margaret. Um, yeah. So Margaret uh, is saying that she she doesn't want to go into a deep depression and, or that she's saying you won't go into a deep depression. She's saying that about you, that I misunderstood. So she's saying you're a fighter. Prayers for an everlasting Sydney. That's awesome. Yeah. That's very sweet of yeah. her to say that. They are. You know, Margaret, I, I'm glad that you tuned in. I'm, I'm hoping that anybody else who is related to lupus in some way uh, can listen to this. And even if you're not connected to lupus, all right, to hear Kendra's journey and then the people that are commenting, all right, it, it, it could be inspiring for anybody who's having bouts with depression, who's having bouts with anxiety. Those things are real. Yeah. And so this... This show can uh, is uh, in many case in many ways uh, a way to give hope and inspiration, and I'm happy that tonight, if you've gotten inspired, Margaret, by by the comments and by Kendra herself for having gone through uh, what she's gone through with kidney failure and what she goes through every day with lupus now, that's awesome. I'm 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 uplifted by hearing that. I'm I'm so glad. Yeah. yeah. All right. So everything will happen in God's time. Amen to that. God is good. And Margaret's saying, I'm inspired. Good. I'm glad. That that makes my night just hearing I that. I Margaret. can't wait to talk to you, yeah. Margaret. Yeah. yeah so, so much to catch up on. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm we're we've got um, a little time left. So what I'd like to do is is kind of talk about how you're how your shuffling work um, along with what you do uh, because you, you, you kind of talked a little bit of that. It's not easy. And that you like, uh, if you work so much, then like that, you know, that fourth day you're going to mm-hmm. have to rest. Yeah. Um, so do you have yourself on some sort of regimen? Like you're um, you go to bed at a certain time so you can get enough rest or what are some things that you do to kind of get prepared so that you feel your very best. So I wish I could go to bed on time every night, but <laughs> I do not. And that's yeah. because I'm probably up eating or doing something I should be, <laughs> like drinking, wa- drinking too much water or yeah. drinking too much soda or something. Um, so I actually, I left work today around 5.30. Okay. And I um, I had a few errands to run and I came home and I was like, I want to get in the bed and go to sleep. But then I was like, I have an interview with Jared today. I'm like, oh, man, I can't go to sleep. So as soon as I get off of this, I'm going to bed because I already took my shower. As soon as I got All home, right. I'm like, I'm comfortable. I'm like, I'm going to go straight to bed. <laughs> but on most days, I usually, um, especially like if I know, I ha- like tomorrow, I probably won't go to sleep early tonight because. I know I work only half a day tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm excited about my half a day and my body's like, oh, you don't have to go to sleep. You don't have to go to sleep. You're not working out. Nice. You're fine. Yeah. So that's how my brain thinks. But then like yeah. today's, like today was one of my longer days because I closed. And um, last night I kept telling myself, go to sleep, go to sleep. But then I ate a bunch of watermelon before I went to bed. So I was uh-huh. going down all night in the bathroom. So I really, you know, it's, <laughs> It's just crazy. I don't. I don't sure. have a great sleep regimen at all. I should. And That's all right. On my off days, I sleep probably until like two in the afternoon. All right. Yeah, I get my sleep on my off days, so I think that's where my okay. sleep comes in at. But other than that, I don't sleep like I should. Um, I actually started working in dialysis because my last job was a night shift job, and my doctor told me it was killing me because I never slept in the daytime. You, so I would. You, Oh, you're work sleep, you're, not yeah. sleep all day. Wow. And then go back to work, and it was hard. It was really hard. So, um, yeah, I started working days, and it's better, but also the hours are long, and then it's kind of, you know, hard work. So, when I come home, it's, it's night night. <laughs> it's, it's, <night-night. laughs> it's time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and my body will always tell me, like, go to bed, Kendra, go to bed. Even if I go to bed now, I may be up again at midnight. 
trying really? to see if, I, see if I have a snack in the kitchen or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, um, you know, uh, the, the thing is, is that, uh, that you have to have little things that will make you smile. All yeah, right. And if, yeah. and if for you, it's a snack. Then that's not terrible. I love it. Mean, yeah. It is because I and then I'm gonna go right back to bed with 400 calories on me. That's terrible. <laughs> but you know, I like. I always say I only have one life to live. Yeah. Why not exactly. Live, live it. Properly? Right. Yeah. You know, if it brings a smile to your face, how terrible can it be? You know. I mean, True. I don't know. Until my doctor's like, oh my God, what have you gotten? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I only ate four snacks. <laughs> so speaking of food though, so I mean, other than the snacks, um, what are some foods that you enjoy? Um, do you enjoy cooking or do you just enjoy, oh. you know, maybe going out to some favorite restaurants? I think both. All but right. I um, received an instant pot for my birthday, so I've been. Oh, I love those for Christmas. Yes, yeah, I, right. I received it from my mom, and I have been using it so much. And I think I'm a chef now, so I'm like nice, all nice. the time mixing up stuff. <laughs> and I love my instant pot. Um, uh, yeah, I love it, and I do like to go out to eat. I miss Mississippi's food a lot because Missouri food is the best, but you know. Um, okay. so I kind of cook my own food here, um, at home, but I do miss my foods from Mississippi. And I, um, when I do go out to eat here, I do overeat. That's another problem because I'm like really greedy. Um, so <laughs> I just, yeah, I like to cook. My favorite foods are like, um, southern meals, like, um, the good home cooked southern down south meals. That's like my favorite. Okay. I do, I do cook a lot. Yeah. You I know, eat, um, again, I it, eat a lot. <laughs> you know, but here's the thing is I'm, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell people I am. I'm not, but what I, mm. but what I am is I'm a person who likes to have happy moments. All really? right. I, you know, because I, I, I struggle with anxiety and depression as well, Kendra. And I, mm -hmm. I, I really feel strongly that if you can find moments where you're smiling and you can focus on this is a good moment, mm -hmm. then it, and if it's bringing you a smile, then I'm not saying that you should um, necessarily overeat and that's okay. But mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying is that if you're finding a food that makes you smile and it's happy, yeah, yeah. then, you know, like, I don't know. I, I just think that if, there are worse things out there that you could exactly. do. Exactly. <laughs> like we only have one life to live. Right. Like we live yeah. Live at our best. Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, so uh, I was talking to a coworker earlier today, and he was talking about New Orleans. And my mm -hmm. sister used to live in Baton Rouge. Okay. okay. So did. Did you eat? Did you used to eat? Do you still eat like crawfish? Or would, would you believe me if I told you that is my all time favorite food? Oh, really? Okay. Awesome. It's like, like, you know, the security question and they say, yeah. what's your favorite food? Uh -huh. It's always crawfish. It's always I crawfish. Love, love, okay. Love crawfish. Yes. That's my favorite. So I'm actually <laughs> going to Mississippi tomorrow and I cannot wait to get some crawfish. <laughs> All right. Well, you take, <laughs> yeah. take some photos of it. I'd, I'd love should. to see it. Yeah. Share it on either Facebook yeah. or Instagram. I'd love to see yeah, it. Yeah. Of course. Because uh, my coworker is like, like describing it and you um, never I was, had a I, no, I haven't. No. Yeah. I've, oh I, it, yeah. And he was just describing it to you me. Just hurt just, my feelings. I know. I'd oh, love wow. to eat it. Yeah. Like <laughs> my sister lived in Baton Rouge and, you know, and she learned how to cook like uh, a whole bunch of, you know, Cajun and Southern dishes, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but she never, she's never made that, or at least I don't know that she has, you know, cause whenever I've gone to my sister's house, she hasn't made it, but, yeah. but crawfish. So, you know, so you've, they boil it. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Or how do they, mm -hmm. was that typical? You to, you, once you um, get them live, you have to purge them. Okay. Get all of the bad things out. And then gotcha. you okay. basically just put them in some hot water and season them really good. With some corn and potatoes and sausage and oh my gosh, I can't believe you haven't had crawfish. <laughs> I know, yeah. especially I he was describing it to me and yeah. his... and Baton Rouge. 
it's actually like an hour and a half away from where I'm going, where I live, where I'm all right. At. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going home, getting some coffee. Oh, I'm happy for her. That's you. Yeah. You look excited. That's awesome. I am. That's yes, cool. I told you yeah. It makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to find somewhere here in Utah that hopefully makes no, it won't decent crawfish. You have to yeah. go to the south. You have right. to go to the south to get crawfish. <laughs> Real crawfish. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe I can get it on, uh, I don't know, dry ice or something and have it shipped here. No, I don't know. no? you have right. to get fresh. You fresh. cannot freeze coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I just upset the whole gonna, South I'm by my statement. You. I'm going to fly you down there and I'm going to okay. meet you and we're going to eat crawfish together. How about that? All right. Okay. That sounds good. I like that. <laughs> Yeah. When we if we get another stimulus package or something, we can work that out. See? Yeah. Okay. I'll okay. tell you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, James is watching. Uh, James, uh, uh, his uh, moniker is Dad Vice TV. He has a great YouTube channel. Okay. Um, yeah, he's a kidney warrior who's Woo-hoo. not on dialysis, but has done things to prevent going on dialysis. And so, great inspiration. I love his YouTube All channel. Right. He's got a positive energy as well, um, you know, and so we, you, I, and he all have that in common. He's got a great smile and great charisma. So thanks for watching, James. And then, she, uh, and Candy's saying mud bugs. Is that what they're called? Yeah, they do call them mud bugs. They're, so, <laughs> so good. they're the best mud bugs I've ever had in my life. <laughs> what kind of seasoning? What kind of seasoning? Um, So you can use crab boil. It was uh-huh. crab, crawfish, shrimp boil. Um, just pour the bag of seasoning in there, and, you know, you got your crawfish. They're so good. Oh, Pull it apart, slurp it, it, or? Um, you want to know how to eat it? Yeah. So, you have the crawfish, you break the tail off, uh-huh. you open the tail, and you pull the meat out. You have to pull the little intestine off the tail, and you eat it. And some people, I do, some people suck the head of the crawfish where the juice is in the inside, Suck the head and you, um, I eat the claws also. I eat the meat out of the claws of the crawfish. So, yeah, I eat everything on the crawfish. Uh, you Have mean, you ever had a lobster? Yes, yes. I love seafood. Oh, I would say crawfish is a mini lobster, but it's all like right. Lobster. Then I'll probably love it. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'm missing out because it sounds delicious. It really does. I love seafood. And so, I, you know, there are certain things like when I went to, it's been a minute, but in 2009, I went to Hawaii and I was able to try some foods there that I'd never eaten okay. before. I love yeah. trying new foods, you know, yeah. and so that'll be on my that'll be on my uh, list of things I, I've, I've got to have. And it's got to be yes. according to you. It's got to be from the south. So I won't yes. find it here. You cannot. Oh. If you find it there, do not eat it. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll tell the Kendra B says, hey, that's not real crawfish okay no it's not at <laughs> all i can't eat that you tell them i cannot eat that <laughs> uh, even uh, even she's saying that i never saw someone uh eat, eat crawfish or like there we go like crawfish as much as her so oh, she's saying yeah. that she, you're I'll the post first. A picture. I'm gonna post a picture of me and my do crawfish. please i love it yes <laughs> please do that's gonna be, i'll look forward to it i know what she meant she said lo- i mean love yeah um, so y'all making me hungry. I'm making myself hungry. It sounds delicious. It sounded delicious when my coworker was talking about it, but now when she's talking about it, I'm, I'm uh, it's mouth watering. It really is. So, all right. Yeah. Loved Hawaii. I loved Hawaii. I, I tried, um, uh, swordfish there. It, that's the stuff that I'd never eaten before. And, you know, and I love, love, uh, swordfish now. So, but yeah, I want to try new things. I, I especially, that's what's so great about seafood is there's so many different fish, different fishes yeah. and different seafood. There are different things that, you know, uh, I, that I can always find something new that I've never had before. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, I'm going to continue to make us all hungry, but hopefully we can get some crawfish sooner versus later, or at least look at your photos tomorrow. You're going to be posting maybe hashtag the Warriors Quest show and maybe tag me in some way. Okay. Of course. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to end the show, but I want to ask you if you would, um, two things. I want you to give a shout outs to friends, family, um, you know, anybody that may be watching that you want to shout out. 
uh, and then give you know um, give your feedback to people that are currently struggling just like you are as a lupus warrior what kind of encouragement and hope would you give them I'm gonna put you solo but I'll still hear and we can still talk okay um so I want to give a shout out to my mom of course my um sister Nina my dad um all of my family and friends co-workers um my sorority sisters of Lambda Sigma Sigma um I love you guys so very much. Everyone is so supportive. Um, I just, I don't know what I would do without all of you. Um, and I, for the lupus warriors out there, ladies, just ladies and men, just continue to fight, continue to fight. We're gonna fight for, fight until we get a cure. I am praying, hoping, wishing for a cure for lupus. I am um, fed up with it. I'm tired. You should be also, we're gonna keep pushing until they can tell us, um, here is the magic shot. Here's the magic pill for lupus. You will no longer have pain. We're gonna continue to fight, fight, fight. Um, and happy Lupus Awareness Month, everyone. Amen, I love it. Thank you for coming on. Thank you um, for having it, me. Oh my gosh, it's been my pleasure. Um, uh, I, I just uh, find you extremely inspiring uh, i Thank love your you. smile uh you. you're you know and, and i i hope that this does give inspiration and hope to so many other lupus warriors by having Thank watched you. this show because Thank i you. i know that you know it's inspired me um you know going through whatever you go through on a daily basis um i'm I'm amazed and, and I thank you for coming on and, and sharing a little bit of your journey with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. You. You've got to tag me tomorrow. Okay. Show I me will. that. All right. Okay. <laughs> right. Have you. a good evening. All right. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, you guys, we are going to continue once a week. All right. For till the end of this month showcasing spotlighting lupus warriors it is again lupus awareness month the whole month of may all right so we're going to be doing this all month long so um you know anybody who who has lupus if you know somebody who would want to come on the show and share their story much like shell allen has then please hit me up or um if i could be a little bit more um direct this is Margaret, all right, Margaret, you are looking for a living kidney donor and you have lupus. So uh, Margaret, if you'd like to PM me, um, hit me up. And if you'd like to come on the Warriors Quest show, Margaret, we can showcase your, if you're on the transplant list, we can showcase your transplant hospital information. And we can have you come on and tell your story about your lupus journey and your need for a living kidney donor. Uh, again, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, I'm, I'm offering that invite. And anybody else who knows somebody who's connected with lupus, please share this post tonight, this broadcast, so they can feel uplifted, encouraged. And let's get more awareness for lupus. All right. Our, uh, the African Americans, people of color, are four times greater with a percentage to get lupus. So even though that percentage is higher, all right, anybody else who's struggling with lupus, whether they're African-Americans or not, or a different gender, different race, whoever is related to lupus, please just message me and let's get your story told because I am so passionate about giving hope, inspiration. That's what we've done tonight and I wanna to continue to do it all month long for May Lupus Awareness Month. So thank you for allowing me to do this. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, again, this is God's plan, all right? I This is my calling that God has given me, and I wanna thank you all for allowing me to do this so that I can give people more inspiration and hope. Let's, let's do this together next week, but please don't be stingy. All right, where's my microphone? Don't be stingy. All right, don't be stingy. Share this, all right? Let's get the word out there. Um, I don't have a guest scheduled yet for next week. I've got a couple of people in mind 
So if anybody, again, is interested who has lupus or is connected to lupus that wants to come on the show, message me and let's continue to, to make more awareness for lupus in May. All right. Hey, I really appreciate all of your support. Thank you. Peace. I am out. Well, we've got a couple comments here. Let me share them. All right. There we go. All right. You, you're what? Hey, take care, James. Seriously, really appreciate your, your support. Uh, I love, love your YouTube channel. And I love your advice and feedback that you've given me and Urban Health Outreach Media. And Shell Allen, nothing but mad respect for you. I hope that you continue to do your very best. And I hope you find a living kidney donor soon. All right. Margaret says she's interested. All right. Praise God. So contact me, Margaret. Uh, message me on Facebook and ask to be my friend or on Instagram. And we'll get this rolling. All right. Good night, everyone. Peace. I'm out. I'm going to find the outro and we'll get this. You're welcome, Shell. All right. I'm going to find the outro. We're going to end, but uh, you can always message me. Um, you can call me um, and I'll continue to, to do whatever I can to help chronic disease warriors, whether it's lupus, kidney disease, um, all port syndrome, I mean, there are so many different things, okay? We've got FSGS. Uh, we also, we have people with PKD, okay? I'm leaving out a bunch of them, but you, you understand the gist of this is I want this show to be open invitation to whatever chronic illness that you have so that we can give inspiration and hope. So I appreciate everybody. Seriously, thank you very much. Peace, I'm out. Where's the outro? I know I've got one. I made it, so I know we have it. All right, here we go. Outro. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. Oh, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ I now I gotta roll with ice. Cold, these brothers, my guys, know that they fly, know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my side. CJ I now I gotta roll with ice. Ride or die, 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 ride or die. Now I gotta ride or die